Hey guys, so it's Tom from Doey here, and uh, this is my Nixie Tube clock build. Um, I'm just going to take it apart today so that you can all see how it works inside, and um, and yeah, give you a feel for the project. So it's all held together with nuts and bolts here, um, for no other reason than I think it looks quite cool. I really like this um, this look and this construction, and this this front piece is just laser cut acrylic, as is the back. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's start taking it apart. So um, yeah, so this is uh, how the front piece comes off. Obviously it's got all these uh, wires here attached to the buttons, so it doesn't come fully off, but uh, as you can see it just sort of folds away there and uh, gives you access to all the stuff here. Um, these Nixie tubes are all socketed, um, because I thought that was sensible. However, the sockets are quite tight, as you've just seen, and it's surprisingly difficult to get them out. <laughs> So, now I've got all them out, um, you can see a bit more of what's going on inside here, basically. So, these are where all the six Nixie tubes are. We have a driver chip per Nixie tube. Some people um, you only use one driver chip to drive all the Nixie tubes. They use one driver chip and a set of, basically, transistors to switch um, between lighting uh, the six. So they'll, they'll light this one, then 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 this one, and they basically multiplex them uh, with only one driver chip. I didn't really see the point in that, uh, because the driver chips are so cheap anyway, <laughs> so why not just use six of them, and it makes it easier to code. It makes it a lot easier to code, actually. So, the way how this works, we have this here is an Atmega 328P-AU or something. Uh, it's one of the Atmel chips, uh, the chip that's in the Arduino Uno, so that's how I programmed it. I programmed it as an Arduino Uno. There's an FDDI header here, but in all honesty, I just took it out and programmed it and put it back in. Um, and then this is driving three shift registers here. So these are 74HC595s, uh, which you can daisy chain. So basically it shifts out to this one first, then this one, then this one. So all it has to do is write one 24-bit binary value. And um, I, from that I can write to this these six simultaneously. And then I can just leave them there and do other stuff in the code and come back to them and re-update them whenever I want. If I was multiplexing, I would have to constantly update the display and it would basically make it a lot more difficult to code. So I've just been nice to myself here and used six of these driver chips, three shift registers, and one Arduino Uno clone, basically. Um, you may be wondering, what's actually keeping the time? <laughs> and I would love to show you, but I can't, because it's underneath here. So, so here's the, uh, the board, and underneath this is... Let me see if I can... Come on, focus. Well, regardless of focus, underneath this um, battery holder here, there is a... There we go. Oh, no, it nearly focused. No, it didn't. It's really struggling. Um, underneath here, there is a surface mount chip. That is a DS3232 um, from Maxim. It's a very, very good chip, actually. It's a really, really, really accurate, and it's got a temperature compensator in there, so it heats up, and I just knocked the tripod... Um, because basically, um, it has a crystal oscillator in there, like every real-time clock chip, or, um, most real-time clock chips will have the crystal oscillator, uh, as a sort of thing you have to attach on your board. Um, but this one has it internal, and the thing with crystal oscillators is temperature changes how much they oscillate, um, and will make them less accurate. So this one heats up, uh, so it's temperature compensated, so it, it always is at the same temperature, so it knows exactly... Um, how its crystal is going to behave and it can adjust accordingly. Uh, so this chip is great. It does all the hours, minutes, seconds, months, days, years, day of the week if you want it to. I obviously can't display day of the week on six numbers. But, um, you know, it's a really good chip and I would look into it um, if you're doing anything involving a real-time clock. The only problem with it is it is only in a uh, surface mount package. So if you don't want a solder surface mount, it's probably not the best. Um, the other thing that you can see right here is the high voltage bit, which is here. This is a board, which I, I ordered it from eBay, I'm going to be honest. Hey, you can see me. Hello. Uh, I ordered it from eBay. It wasn't expensive, it was probably about six quid. Not expensive at all. 
and it just works. So I could have designed my own high voltage power supply, but for six quid, why not just buy one? So this here is the underside of the board. As you can see, there's a slight bodge on it. Uh, basically, when I was designing this PCB, I forgot that um, each Nixie tube needed a resistor for it. And basically, I didn't put that in. So the original high voltage line, which came from, this is the high voltage input over here, or was. Um, and it ran along the back here and went to each Nixie tube. And that was all fine, until it wasn't. Um, because I had to cut with Stanley Knife, I had to cut through that trace and make sure they were all disconnected from each other. Um, and then I had to add a resistor in for each of them. And basically I sort of made this mesh thing with insulating tape and heat shrink to keep it all from shorting on the board. And this is my new high voltage input. So this is where the high voltage comes from, the, uh, the high voltage power supply over there and it is fed through a resistor to each of the Nixie tubes. Um, yeah, in the board, I have this board up on Oshpark, uh, but it's the updated version which doesn't need this. And I think there's another thing I did wrong on this one, but I can't remember it off the top of my head, which is fixed. The one that's up on Oshpark is fixed and should work straight off the bat. Um, the other thing I'd like to note is I forgot that these holders have these bits. So, as you can see here, they have these little screw mounts, which is great if you want to mount it with screws, but I didn't. And as you can see, I've had to cut them all off the bottom here. I had to just hack all them off because chips need to go there. Um, you could, in theory, if you didn't socket these chips, you could uh, fit them underneath these, but I didn't know it was gonna work at the time, so I thought I'd better socket them just in case the chips blew. I'm glad I did actually because a couple of the chips did blow uh, before I had these protection resistors in and I needed to replace them. So, you know, it's a good thing I socketed them. Um, so the other thing on this top side, you can see we have some mammoth caps over here. These are 470 microfarads, so actually they're not that big. Um, so the DC is, uh, the DC, I think I'm using a 12 volt, four amp supply. Yeah, I am, which is ridiculously over -spec'd. You need more than 10 volts for the high voltage power supply, but for this bit, you don't need any near that. And also, the Nixie tubes draw probably about one or two milliamps each. So they're not, they're not high current, and none of this stuff's high current, so I don't think I need four amps. But I had it lying around, so I decided to use it. So this is a just a 7805 voltage regulator, um, and filtering capacitors, doing... Sorry about that guys, my camera decided that would be a great time to run out of space. Um, so I think I was talking about the power supply for all this stuff, this is all running off 5 volts standard. Uh, so this is a 7805 voltage regulator giving me those 5 volts um, with some caps to filter it. Uh, I have an onboard power switch here, which uh, basically was just for when I was testing it. Uh, then of course I have the actual switch which is running through some cables around here and off to there, to the front of the case, so that I can switch the thing on and off. Uh, the thing I forgot to mention, this chip is running off I2C. Uh, you can get an SPI version of the DS3232. I'll link in um, the page, uh, the data sheets for the DS3232 with I2C and SPI. Um, I've also put some 4K7 pull-up resistors here. So that sound is a door opening in my house. Um, just to let you know what that was. I've got some 4K7 pull-up resistors here and also a 10K pull-up, which I kind of had to bodge into one of these pins. Again, that's the other thing that I forgot to mention earlier that's fixed on the full version of this board, uh, which you can order from Oshpark. So, you know, if you want to build a Nix tube clock, um, but you don't want to go through the faff of designing your own board and working out why it's not working, then go ahead and use mine. Uh, that's all free. Um, I'll put all my code up uh, on my website as well as general build instructions um, so that'll all be up there uh, so yeah that's my Nixie tube clock thanks very much